Hello and welcome back to Let's Develop Code Hunt. As you might remember in the last episode, I quit because somehow this whole uh, code capture tool I'm using in this game uh, broke on me. And as you can see right now, it's still kind of broken. But in the meantime, I figured out why it is broken and I'm going to show you in a second. So what you recognize here and that is that the whole editor is kind of scrolled to the right, but uh, I'm trying to scroll right now. There are no scroll walls. I'm trying to scroll with my trackpad, but it's not possible. But I'm going to show you something. Um, if I go to the last level I completed, which is the 3.3, you can see that I actually used quite a, a lot of space to the right. And you can see on the scroll bars down here that I'm currently actually on the left. So if I scroll around here a bit, it will read justify. And if I scroll to the left, actually, and then exit the level and enter the fourth level, then what's going to happen is that this is uh, scrolled correctly. So somehow there's some magic uh, thing in the background that keeps this editor open and just replaces the code. And because the code is not long enough anymore, the scroll bar disappears and it's kind of messed up. Um, yeah, yet another example of Microsoft's great software implementation skills. Sorry, Microsoft, but you earned that one. Um, anyways, since my editor is um, kind of fixed again and I know how to fix it the next time it's going to break, uh, I can actually continue with a fourth task of sector three. Um, I already implemented these three uh, conditions with the returns here last time, but um, I still have no clue what the actual function is I'm supposed to, to implement. So um, I'm going to implement some more special cases and to, to get an idea what... Oh, no, that was wrong. To get an idea what's, what's actually going on. This was wrong, right? Yeah, it's supposed to return zero and we have an n equals minus 96 return 24 so actually again I have uh, output for negative inputs but um the result is 24 but it's supposed to be ah it's supposed to be zero oh sorry so Essentially, what this is telling me is that everything smaller than 2 is supposed to be 0, maybe? If n is smaller or equal to, just return 0. What's going to happen here? Yeah, looks better, looks better. So for 15 and for 16, it's supposed to be 50... Six. What's the function? This is computing. This is confusing. For three, it's supposed to return two. If n equals three, return two. Some more values like for four, it's also supposed to return two. So smaller equals four, supposed to return two. Let's see, maybe I get a five out of, it, out of it. If not, I'm going to cheat a five in there. So we have an if n equals 31, return 240. And I want to know what's going on with a 5, so I'm going to introduce 5, return 0, which is probably wrong. So I hope that the test generator will actually generate the test case for 5. And it did, because it's supposed to return 6. Nice capture. So if n equals 9, there's another test case, actually. Yeah, it's supposed to return 20. At least it's still an increasing thing, but I want to have more values. I want to have six. What gas is going to return the six and seven return whatever ten 
and an age return whatever 15 it's probably going to be wrong but I hope that I get the test cases generated that uh, I want to have to to uh, speed this whole process up a little return 30 uh, 12 return 40 whatever if 13 return 44 and if 14 return 50 probably most of these are wrong but I hope that I get a lot of uh, helpful test cases now at one uh, one compilation process I'm going to see uh, it worked I think it kind of worked out so for 7 it's 12 for 8 it's also 12 for 9 do I have a 9 9, 9, 9, for 9 it's supposed to be 20. Wow, I guess correctly, cool. Um, for 10 it's supposed to be 20 as well. For 11 it's supposed to be 30, I guess, right, correctly again. For 12 it's also supposed to be 30. For 13 it's supposed to be 42. I like 42, I should have guessed 42. I thought about guessing 42. 42 is the answer to all the questions. In the end, so it's 24, it's 42, 42, 56, 56. Okay, so what's going on here is that I always have two subsequent numbers having the same result because actually this is 2, 4, 4, and 3, and it is 0, 4, 2, and 1. If I just think about the positive numbers. So the question is what to make of this? Um, what to make of this? So it's probably a loop that is somehow subtracting two in every run. I'd say so we have 0 at first then we have 2 then we have 6 then we have 20 which is 2 times 6 then we have uh, tw uh, 12 sorry 12 is 2 times 6 then we have 20 which is this is plus this is plus 4, this is plus 6, this is plus 8, this is plus 10, this is plus 12, this is plus 14. Okay, so we have a plus 2, a plus 4, a plus 6, and so on here, you see. Um, plus 8, plus 10 plus 12 plus 14 and it's probably going to continue like that so 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 what's what's the deal here what's the the function so I have a basic result which is 0 do we agree here hopefully so if it is 0 I'm going to return and 0 I'm not going into the loop and equals 0 e smaller n e plus plus actually probably plus equals 2 um result plus equals in the case of one and in the case of two I'm not supposed to add anything ba, 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 ba. 
it's not plus e, is it? No, it is plus e. It is plus e. Uh, I, sorry. <laughs> uh, my German coming through. So, might it be something like this? Yeah, this captures it and whoa Microsoft you improved actually I implemented a loop solution and I got the full points on the full skill rating on the uh, loop implementation for the loop level thank you very much Microsoft let's continue with the next one maybe there's another loop level I can get full skill points with a loop implementation on would be re really really nice continue ah okay now it's reacting my editor is still working and I'm going to take on level 3.5. Let's see, we get an upper bound into our puzzle and we have to return an integer. An upper bound. And for 6 it's 56 and for 7 it's 84. What's the difference between 84 and 56 is 28, isn't it? 28 is 4 times 7. What's 4 times 6? This is 24, isn't it? Uh, 56 minus 24 is 52 is 32. 32 so my uh, I'm, I'm just going to uh, I'm not going to wild guess somehow I get into guessing because of this up bound thing so okay 6 is returning 56 up bound uh, 7 is returning 84 and I guess upper bound 5 is returning 32 because this is what I just calculated. I have no clue if that's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Maybe my theory was completely wrong and then it's good that I tried it out instead. I got a result for 15. Thank you very much. Take the lighting with big numbers here. Upper bound equals 15 return 680 thanks I don't want to calculate with these big numbers it's late in the evening I have no fun in calculating with big numbers in my hat so I'm going to try the same trick as last time just returning arbitrary numbers here and hope that the test generator will uh, we'll see this conditionals and um, actually generate me the test case. It didn't work for the five, but maybe it's going to work for these lower ones, which is actually not the case. Damn it! This is not nice of you. Damn you, test generator. 5456. Thanks for that one. Numbers getting bigger and that to this late tame. Oh, it's getting even bigger. Thank you. Ah, no, not even bigger. Sorry. My fault. Upper bound of 25 returns 2925. I, I want to have some values for the lower ones. Would be really nice, but you're not going to be nice, are you? Upper bound equals 30, then you return. <laughs> 4960, so it's somewhat in between. <laughs> it's getting even bigger. Thanks very much. Um, okay, if this is an upper bound, then I'm going to do something from, let's say, 1 up to this bound right so 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 
What am I going to do? Uh, unfortunately, I only have this three subsequence, and I only know that these two are correct. So these are my only subsequent ones. Oh, that's actually not true. I have subsequent ones here. Other numbers are too big for my brain right now. So let's try something out. So I have int result equals let's say zero and for int i zero i smaller upper bound i plus plus I'm going to add i times four just uh, completely wild guess because it's four times seven added here I don't know it's probably going to be completely wrong but I want to try it out anyways just in hope to get some more values oh no it's not even wrong interestingly <laughs> I managed to hit it a good solution for uh, upper bound of 7 but for the upper bound of 6 it's not working um, interesting really interesting uh, but I have no idea why and it's actually 4 it's 4 too much 4 too much for the 6 case Mm, my brain is not making any sense out of this. So this is actually kind of a brain teaser. Okay, okay, how can I get more values out of you? How can I get more values out of you? I'm kind of annoyed that the test generator does not give me uh, more helpful values with this calculation. So, of course, I can uh, continue doing stuff like this, but I guess my brain is incapable of getting the schema out of these large numbers. Some of it's increasing, so in every loop iteration, something is added or multiplied or something like that. But. I would really like to have the smaller ones just to get uh, to get some of the numbers right. Let me try something. I'm going to comment out all the ones I added myself and hope that maybe then I get some something out of the test generator. Not much hope. No, they're getting larger and larger and larger. I'm going, I'm going to give it one more try, but I uh, guess it will give me an even larger number next time. Three, nine, four, seventy something, ninety something, <laughs> ninety nine. Okay, this is not getting me anywhere. So, what can I do to solve this situation? Fifty six. How can I get a fifty six out of a six if the six is the upper bound? It's not dividable by six, it's not dividable by five. It's actually dividable by four. But I don't see where this is going to help. Dividable by 4 is uh, 14, which does not make much sense to me either. I would really like to have the low numbers to see how this how this sequence starts. So I'm not sure, but I'm guessing there's a there's a zero return because there's this zero return thingy here. 
So I'm going to retry the result thing. Say, okay, we have a loop and I zero, and I implement this before upper bound I plus plus some calculation return results. How can I make this match? How can I possibly make this match? How about just adding them up? Simplest possible solution. I'm not I don't think that's going to be the right one, but I'm going to try it anyways just to uh, just to have an idea. No, this is not Okay, maybe I'm just too tired to solve this right now, and since this episode is already going on for quite a while, I'm going to stop here now and continue on this very point the next time. See you around.